Hello and a very good morning to you. This is Rachel live from Kalkine Studios in Sydney. You're watching The Opening Bell. Let us cast an eye over how the Australian market charter is panning out so far today. The Australian share market struggled for direction at the open in Wednesday's trading session. After trading high a day after the Reserve Bank of Australia shifting towards a hawkish tone and took its first step towards tapering its massive stimulus program. Global equity markets traded lower yesterday after some indices showed the first sign of weakness since the last few days. China's latest tech crackdown tumbling bond yields, lower crude oil prices and rising expectations of a hawkish Fed report due out on Wednesday waved red flags for many investors. Amid China signaling a clamp down on company data and offshore listings, Chinese ride-hailing company Didi Global's share price tumbled over 20% in a day after Chinese authorities ordered Didi's app to be taken down, just days after its 4.4 billion US dollar listing on the New York Stock Exchange. Other US listed Chinese companies including JD.com, Alibaba, Beidou Inc. also fell sharply on Tuesday. Another major cause for the cautious tone in markets can be attributed to the softness in key U.S. and German data releases. The U.S. ISM Non-Manufacturing Activity Index Services Index fell by more than expected in June to 60.1. That's from a previous record level of 64 the previous month. Similarly, Germany's factory orders unexpectedly slumped 3.7% in May. Market participants are keenly eyeing the minutes from the U.S. Federal Open Market Committee. Investors expect the committee to confirm a hawkish or anti-inflation tilt that could reverse losses from Tuesday's session. Closer to home now, let us look at the market open trades in the Australian share market. Investment management firm Challenger was the top gainer on the board on the back of the news that Apollo Global has nabbed a strategic stake in the company. Other top performing stocks on the ASX 200 include Zero and Charterhall. Healthcare stocks took the limelight. Cochlear, ResMed and CSL climbed up the board. Meanwhile, energy stocks were the leading laggards during the early trades, given the global oil price downtick. Next, before we jump onto the ASX charter for today in more detail, Let's look at Friday's U.S. market performance. Overnight, the Dow Jones fell 0.6%, while the broader market index, the S&P 500, was down 0.2%. Meanwhile, the tech-heavy Nasdaq Composite registered a gain of 0.17%. U.S. Treasury yields tracked lower, with the benchmark 10-year note yield marking its longest losing streak in 16 months, as market participants look for clues on the Fed's policy path. The yield on 10-year Treasury notes was down 6.4 basis points. Moving on to the currency space, the U.S. dollar gained on Tuesday following the U.S. Independence Day long weekend as investors positioned themselves ahead of the release of the minutes from the Fed's June meeting. Meanwhile, the Australian dollar firmed during the early trading hours but lost all of its gain during the end of the session as the country's central bank said it would decrease the pace of its bond buying campaign from September but also reaffirmed that a rate hike is not on the cards, likely until 2024. Now it's time for a very short break, but stay tuned. I'll be back with trending updates for the Australian share market. This is Andy Liu broadcasting from Kalkine Media Studio in Australia and I'll be hosting the new Kalkine Wellness Show. The half hour show will cover topics from how wellness as a concept has become even more significant during COVID to how becoming vegan may improve your health and much more. We are excited to showcase our live streaming show to our audience of millions overseas and in Australia. Tune in to Kalkine TV and join me. Welcome back. I'm Rachel, your host live from Kalkine Studios, and you're watching The Opening Bell. Now that we've taken a glimpse at U.S. market performance, let us look at major newsmakers in the Australian share market. To begin with, shares in Buy Now, Pay Later player split it rose on launching a global in-store offering 
to new and existing merchants with a bricks and mortar presence. Split It in-store will provide an installment payment option to shoppers when making larger value purchases such as home furnishings, jewellery, luxury retail and sporting goods. It will also enable shoppers to use Apple Pay and Google Pay accounts via Split It. Next newsmaker worth noting is multinational contractor the Simic Group. Their shares traded up after being awarded a $300 million South Australian government contract. Simic's joint venture, Ventia, has been awarded the Across Government Facilities Management Arrangement by the Government of South Australia. The contract is expected to deliver revenue of $300 million over the initial five-year, seven-month period. There is an option for three two-year extensions. Moving on, the biggest newsmaker seems to be investment management firm Challenger. Their shares skyrocketed on news that Apollo Global has nabbed a strategic stake in the company. American private equity and alternatives giant Apollo and its insurance affiliate Athene were buyers of a line of 80.4 million shares via Baron Joey Capital on Wednesday morning. Moving on, medical equipment manufacturer Clean Space holding shares dipped given the COVID-19 headwinds to the business. Hit by difficult trading conditions in the second half of financial year 2021, the company expects a revenue of $10.2 million. That's down from $39.7 million in the first half, with full-year revenue of roughly $50 million. Online retail marketplace group MyDeal shares jumped on reporting an uptick in gross sales for financial year 2021. The company recorded gross sales of $218.1 million, up 111% compared to the previous year. It has placed itself in an enviable position to harness the increased demand and ongoing transition to e-commerce, with active customers now exceeding 894,000. Moving on, shares in Woodside Petroleum edge lower. That's after completing the Sangomar acquisition from FAR for the entire participating stake in Rafesk Offshore, Sangomar Offshore and Sangomar Deep Offshore Research and Scientific Support Department joint venture. The continued safe execution of the Sangomar project is a key priority for Woodside this year. A major milestone is expected tomorrow with the arrival of the Ocean Black Rhino drill ship in preparation for the start of development drilling next week. Meanwhile, Australia's largest telecom player, Telstra, shares jumped, and that says the company has been ordered to pay $25 million in refunds to almost 50,000 customers on underperforming internet plans. The Australian Communications and Media Authority found that Telstra failed to notify customers across Australia that the speeds advertised in their internet plans were unattainable due to the national broadband network infrastructure in their areas. Next in the news now, shares in the Betmakers Group rose on signing partnership for British and Irish horse rating, racing. The multi-year live streaming agreement with sports information services and racecourse media group for the distribution of live horse racing vision and wagering content from Britain and Ireland has been approved to the corporate bookmakers in Australia. Now it's time for a very short break, but stay tuned as I'll be back with more trending updates for the Australian share market. Property by Kalkine. Looking for a dream home? Well, that may sound easy, but it isn't. And from looking for a property that is the right fit for you in terms of cost and other factors, to zeroing down on the right mortgage plan, there are various aspects to consider. And for the latest slowdown in the property market, tune in on Calkine TV with me, Sage. I will give the latest updates on the property market, as well as real estate stocks to help you make the right decision. Keep watching. Property with Calkine. And welcome back. This is Rachel, your host live from Calkine Studios. You're watching the opening bell. Moving on, let us glance through the ASX sectoral charter. Australian technology shares are trading higher during early trades. 
defying Chinese tech clampdown effects. The tech-heavy Nasdaq again closed at a record high, rising 0.47% on Tuesday. Newex, Afterpay, Zipco and Nearmap, all their shares traded higher. Zero and Ystec also advanced. Meanwhile, Australian energy majors such as Beach Energy, Santos and Oil Search traded in the red zone amid oil price downtick. Brent crude fell 3.4%. West Texas Intermediate crude futures settled 2.4% down. And on Tuesday, crude oil retraced from higher levels. That's after the organization of the petroleum exporting countries and allies, known as OPEC+, Plus, cancelled a meeting due to clashes over plans to increase production to meet rising global demand. This included the United Arab Emirates rejecting an eight-month extension to output curbs. It's yet to be seen if a new meeting would take place in the coming days and lead to an increase in supply in August 2021. Let us move on now to the miners' space. Heavyweight miners BHP Group, Rio Tinto and Fortescue Metals are trading in the red zone as China's crack down on metal trading. On Tuesday, Chinese steel futures rose on the back of higher raw material prices, although slowing auto sales and construction activities capped gains. The iron ore futures for the September month delivery on the Dalian Commodity Exchange closed the session 2.8% higher. Meanwhile, copper prices pulled back from a rally on Tuesday after the US dollar rebounded and oil prices slid from higher levels. On that note, ASX listed copper players Oz Minerals and Sunfire Resources traded in the red during early trading hours today. Looking over to the yellow metal space, Newcrest Mining and Evolution Mining, Romelius Resources and Gold Road Resources, their shares soared amid a gold price uptick. Gold prices notched higher, bouncing above a significant level of 1,800 US dollars. A retreat in the US bond yields has bolstered the demand for the yellow metal, while investors watch for minutes from the Fed's latest policy meeting to gauge interest in the rate path. Well, that's all from me for now. We'll be bringing more stock updates in our upcoming shows during the day. Stay tuned for more live updates on Calkine TV across the economy, markets and sectors. I'm Rachel, signing off for now.